from Bahrain, it's theCUBE, covering AWS Public Sector Bahrain. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services. Welcome back everyone, it's CUBE coverage here in Bahrain, Middle East, part of AWS Amazon Web Services Summit. It's our second year covering the evolution and the revolution to cloud computing. This year the big news is AWS has a region spurring innovation and entrepreneurship in the Middle East region. Our next guest is Ahmad Hamadan, CEO and co-founder of Unifonic, a super hot company. Congratulations on your success. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, John. So we were just talking before we came on camera, this API economy uh, that we've been covering in depth. You've been living, this is your world. You have a really big business, not a lot of employees, less than 200 employees, billions of transactions, API transactions. This is, this is the success formula we've been seeing in the public companies, mm. Twilio, among others, mm. messaging, mm. application integration. Mm. This is cloud now, right? This mm. is happening. What's your story? Okay, so, you know, these times, uh, I would say it's a golden age for the technology in the region and for the cloud specifically. Uh, when we started back in 2006, uh, you know, we were very lonely. Uh, we're, we're not even in that time at, in the cloud. Uh, so we started just to solve the issue of bulk messaging through writing a script or software that allow us to broadcast message to a group of people. But uh, along the journey, we realized that businesses need tools, uh, especially ABIs, uh, that will allow them to, to, to reach to a wider, uh, I would say, audience with a seamless integration. And this is how the cloud communication industry emerged. Uh, uh, so we avail our ABIs for businesses from all around the, the region, uh, especially with segments or sectors that have a mass communication need, like banks, uh, M-government, uh, retailers, and the e-businesses. The, yeah. the, the data in this business is fascinating. Before we get into some of those questions, talk about the origination story. How did it all start? Okay, great. So I was at, at the university uh, at the age of 22, probably, and uh, I lead the, one of the student clubs. And I wanted to communicate a message to 400 people. Uh, uh, and you know the limitation of the mobile back then, I couldn't do it, it's a terrible experience. You cannot send to more than 10 people. The text is, is, is not full, and you know, all these complications. So being a software engineer, uh, and uh, you know, I had an idea, there should be a solution that uh, you can write code, publish it online, and then it will do the magic for you. Four months later, uh, I, I partnered with my brother who's a software, uh, you know, uh, geek uh, more than I, and uh, you know, we were ready. Life. Older or younger brother? Younger brother, okay. four <laughs> years younger. Uh, he was at high school back then. Uh, and then uh, four months later, we were live, sending thousands of messages uh, over the internet. It was like magic. Friends and family like it, it's real, it's making money. And you know, for us, you know, you know, you, it's like uh, when you have 4,000, 5,000, it's a big money for us that yeah. we earn each month. Uh, and then like uh, moving forward, in 2008, I decided this is the, the dream. We need to scale this and build a, a venture out of this small, you know, experiment. Uh, and then I left the job and I dedicated my time to scale that business and I moved uh, the business toward the business and the cloud and communication. Our first move to the cloud was uh, uh, 2010. Uh, we used AWS to move uh, most of our infrastructure to the cloud. Uh, and by 2013, we completely pivoted into the cloud communication uh, uh, business, where the focus is into the ABI, the integration uh, with the applications and the customer systems. And, and then allow them to, to, you know, communicate to, you know, hundreds of millions of, of customers. And then mobile phones, obviously, GPS is built in, applications, tsunamis happening. Exactly. People want to interface with the companies via their phone. Exactly, I will give you an example. You know, you, it come to my mind while you're talking. We used to have customers back in 2010, they send only along the year like maximum one million transaction. The same customers nowadays, like nine years later, they send at least 200 million transactions. So you can imagine the growth in the use cases and the adoption from the customers. 
They use it now for engagement, for notification, for awareness, for security and authentication, for uh, personalized marketing content, like hundreds of use cases. Uh, like we do some uh, uh, analysis in the behavior of the customers and the consumer, and we realized that uh, in a modern society, uh, an individual interact digitally with at least 50 brands in a day. This is huge. You, you can do the math. If you multiply this by 100 million population, then there is a massive, a huge number of transactions and data is being processed. And what are you guys doing now? Is it mainly targeted application developers? or businesses as a turnkey solution? What's the, what's the value proposition Great now? question. So, uh, two years uh, like uh, later, we realized that we cannot target all the market and serve all the customers. We need to focus into the segment that has high potential. Then we identified five segments where we tailored our solution, our value proposition toward those segments. And uh, it's aligned with the trends in the region. Maybe it's not applicable to other regions. Uh, so number one for us is the online banking segment. Uh, I would see the financial industry uh, with all the you know uh, evolution of the fintech and the online and mobile banking. So th those are number one. We do integrate our system with their current systems out of the shelf. We don't do much of a customization. We usually provide ready uh, integrable components to toward their system and then the they hook up their system to ours and then they have the dashboard and platform to orchestrate the communication. Then number one is the M government. Uh, uh, it's also an, uh, you know, an industry that is evolving uh, in the, the region. Then number three for us is the e-businesses. And they are very hot, very high potential growth. Uh, I would say the, the number one in terms of growth, e-business include the e-commerce, the on-demand delivery, the food delivery applications, uh, you name it. And then the, the fourth industry for us is the, the retailer who are moving now toward the loyalty and the engagement more to differentiate themselves in, in this tough world for them. And the last one is the, uh, I would say, the hospitality and the, you know, the, uh, you know, uh, hotels and, you know, travel agents. I think anyone building an app would want this if they're mobile. So what's, what's your take of the ecosystem entrepreneurship now much different just in one year. You have an Amazon region here. <laughs> what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> it's going to be like you and your brother all over again with <laughs> other entrepreneurs. Exactly. You know, when I, uh, you know, see fellow entrepreneurs, usually, uh, you know, approach me for, you know, kind of mentorship and coaching. Um, you know, we are at a stage a little bit, you know, been through difficult, you know, <laughs> situations. <laughs> you got the scar so, tissue. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I, 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 you know, I usually told them, guys, it's like being so easy for you, you know, at this time. Yeah. I know that with with all the, the this like, I would say support, the barrier to entry become uh, yeah. much less, but at least there are many things you don't need to think how you figure out, it's already there. You just need to have the passion, dedication, and then you'll find yeah. many people to support you. Especially, I would say there is only one area it's not yet well you know, covered in the region, which is the access to the talents. I think this is a worldwide problem even for folks in the Silicon Valley. Yeah. But uh, in terms of funding, uh, the ease of doing business, setting up uh, ventures, access to the uh, technology uh, platforms like uh, the cloud infrastructure, in terms of advice, mentorship, and coaching, uh, there is, uh, I would say, an abundance of that available today for, for entrepreneurs. And I can tell the next five years, you will see a huge uh, value being created out of this. Yeah, instead of riding waves, you're we'll going to be riding mm. S-curves. So it's easier now. Mm. Still hard to build a company, but you're right. I mean, go back 10 years ago, you had to put it all together. It takes us six months to set up the, the company, you know, legally, back then, 2006. Got to get the infrastructure <laughs> legally, get servers, get some funding, you know, prototype it, get it launched, get customers. Now they have a partner network. Exactly. These kids are spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> no idea how good they have it, don't they? <laughs> yeah. But, you know, it's difficult today to differentiate yourself yeah. because you will find tons of people are either doing or planning to do the same. They got to build some smart intellectual exactly. property. This is where machine learning is going to be a great opportunity. That's going to be a domain expertise kind of thing. You guys have a nice niche and broad market that's growing. Good comps around it. 
You've got all kinds of systems out there that need this. Exactly. You know, the question today is not if the tools and support is available or not. The question is how you're going to use those tools to create something unique. Ahmed, great to see you. Thanks for coming on and Thank sharing you, your experiences. John. You're an inspiration to the other entrepreneurs out there. Thank you, John. And again, remember, entrepreneurship is like a family. It's like a team sport. Pay it forward. The younger okay. generation is coming online. So Absolutely. Good Thank job. Congratulations you, on your success. Thank Cube coverage here in Bahrain, talking to startups. This is going to be a hot market for entrepreneurship. If the capital markets can form around it, the Cube is here covering it here in Bahrain. Stay with us for more at AWS Summit after the short break. <laughs>